Hello, this is a video specifically for people who are new owners of the Nikon D3500, which has been their big entry-level SLR. A lot of you are probably looking at this camera and wondering about where to get started with your menu and quick menu setup and how to get started shooting some pictures and maybe start having some fun with the camera. In this video, I'm gonna take you through what's called the quick menu, and that is the items that are the most commonly changed in the camera, and so you've got a direct button that brings you immediately there for quick access to those. In later videos, I'll be delving into the full menu system itself, but for right now, we're gonna get into the quick menu system. Here we go. What we're gonna do is take a look at the quick menu in the Nikon D3500. So what we're looking at right now is the menu page. Um, and if we press the info button, then we are brought up to this quick menu. And this quick menu is all of the things that are essential and that we have immediate access uh, to. What's important to know is that we're looking at this in, in auto mode, as we can see at the top left. And what we're going to do now is switch the mode of the camera to the program mode, which is a P. And now that we're in program mode, when we press the info button for the quick menu, we have a lot more options that we can select as we're going through. And this is because in auto mode, of course, we are going to have fewer options. That's a totally normal thing. And what we're gonna do now is go through each one of these in turn with the exception of the flash mode. And we're gonna start at the top left and this is gonna be image quality. So image quality is going to be uh, the file type and then the amount of compression within that file type. What's important to know here is that we have something called raw and we have something that's called JPEG. Now JPEG is listed at the top left, and so if we have JPEG basic, it's gonna be lifted, listed in the bottom as just basic. A lot of Nikon cameras come out of the box set to JPEG normal, and this is not the best image quality even for JPEG that's possible. We're a lot better off if we start with at least JPEG fine. Now, when we have a, uh, an editing program that we're comfortable with, you're gonna get a lot more information out of your pictures by shooting in RAW, but you will need to have some kind of a uh, editing suite that is gonna be able to work with the RAW files and that you're comfortable working with. They are not in any way more difficult to edit, but it is important that you know that. So we could shoot RAW, we can shoot RAW and a JPEG if we're so inclined, or of course we could choose the JPEG quality. Now, I'm just gonna tell you to select JPEG fine if you're very new to photography, and we're gonna try to move to RAW later. Next, we're gonna move over to image size, and this is going to be the number of pixels we're effectively shooting at. There's gonna be large, medium, and small here, and you're gonna see the size of each file approximately listed on the left, with large being 17 megabytes. I'm just gonna tell you, if you are shooting a JPEG image, make sure it's set to large. There's really not a good reason to shoot in medium or in small. While we might change to raw images later on, we will always stay with our largest file size. Back to our quick menu, and the next thing here is our white balance. The white balance is going to be the way the camera, it, it adjusts for the color of the light around us. Now we're gonna see several presets and that's what I would encourage you to start playing with initially here is these presets. In uh, later shooting, we learn how to do the, uh, the measured white balance, which is called manual white balance. It's listed as pre here in the white balance menu. We also learn when shooting in RAW how to do a manual white balance correction after the fact. But right now, we're just gonna be taking a look at the settings that we can use initially. In auto, the camera is going to try to determine what the most predominant color in front of you is. And there are many situations where it is not correct. So the rest of these is going to be a common color temperature or a common light source type. We have incandescent, fluorescent, direct sunlight, flash, cloudy day, 
shade, and then a preset manual. And we're going to ignore the preset manual for right now. You can be an auto for mixed lighting circumstances, but I do encourage you if you're shooting outdoors, if you're shooting in a cloudy day environment or shady environment, to use those presets in white balance because you are going to be more successful and get more accurate color, which is important when you shoot a JPEG image as you have less latitude in correcting color after the fact. Next, we move over to what's called ADL, and this stands for active delighting. You can think of this as an auto enhancement. We're going to turn it on and off, and right now I want you to notice the example image on the left. There are example images shown in most of the quick menus in the Nikon camera system, and you're seeing the auto enhancement turn on and off here as we go. And what's happening is when active delighting is on, it tries to bring information out of highlights and shadows without changing the midtones too much. I typically leave this on as it does bring out a little bit more information, which is quite nice. We're going to skip the flash options and move straight to ISO, or which nowadays regularly called ISO. ISO is a control over our camera's sensitivity to light, or how sensitive to light the sensor in the camera is. The larger the number, the more sensitive to light we are. And in particular, I want you to pay attention to the Im example images on the left. As we move through these, we're going from these outdoor scenes at 100 and 200, we move to indoor at 400, and at 800 we get to this night scene. We start getting really dimly lit situations in 1600 and 3200. Notice 6400 is indoor action, and then we start seeing nighttime scenes uh, at 12,800 and 25,600. You don't choose an ISO that is too large because it will degrade your image quality, but you'd want it to be high enough that you can handhold the shot. If you're working in program mode and you're getting blurry pictures, the first trick I'm going to teach you to utilize is change your ISO and bring it up until your pictures are no longer motion blurred. Of course, there's quite a bit more to understanding exposure, but for the moment, that's where we're going to leave it. Next, we're going to go to the focusing system with what's called the focusing mode. You're going to see here AFA, AFS, AFC, and manual focus, or MF. Let's go through what these are. AFA is autofocus auto. And you're going to notice these blue arrows in the example image. This allows the camera to decide for you if it thinks your subject is moving. As a result, I am not a big fan of this you know if your subject is likely to move or not. The difference between shooting a picture of a tree and a surfer in the example images is, is pretty obvious. So instead, I would encourage you to choose between AFS and AFC initially. AFS is for a static or an unmoving subject. Landscape scenes, portrait scenes are perfect for this. AFC is for your moving subjects. So you can see in those example images, the tree and the surfer, that we're deciding if the camera is going to constantly be focusing along with a moving subject. Where manual focus, you focus the scene yourself. And let's get you comfortable with the autofocus modes before we move into manual focus. Next, we're going to be looking at the autofocus area mode. And you're going to see two options, a single point and an evaluative uh, option. In the evaluative, or what's called auto area autofocus, auto area AF, the camera's going to decide for you what it thinks your subject matter is. And it's going to use two basic concepts in order to arrive at this decision. Things in the middle are prioritized, and things closer to you are prioritized. So the image of the little girl with the ice cream cone really is a good example of a time when the camera would choose the appropriate subject. But a lot of times, it will guess incorrectly. And that's what the single autofocus point is for. With this option, you can place your focusing crosshair somewhere in the frame and merely take that crosshair and put it right over your subject, and then your subject will be in focus. This is the way that we control the point of focus and where the camera focuses in photography. And so get comfortable using single point AF. I can't stress that enough. It will make your life as a photographer a lot easier. 
Next, we're looking at the metering mode, and you're going to have three options. The metering mode of your camera is going to be where the camera evaluates light when it tries to decide how bright or dark to make your picture. As we shoot more manually, we're going to control this uh, with more degrees of accuracy, but initially, you're going to use this just to tell the camera where your subject likely is so that it can meter that effectively. Please note, this is not the same as focusing. This is where it evaluates light so it decides how bright or dark to make the picture. Now you're gonna get three options. This first one is gonna be called matrix metering, which evaluates the entire frame. Next is center weighted metering, which is just for the very middle of the frame. And then spot metering is for very tricky situations where it just meters the very center of the frame itself or the point where you have acquired focus if you're in single autofocus point mode. We tend to use center weighted metering most of the time. And that's because we tend to have a subject, place a subject in the middle of the frame, and take a picture. So I would actually encourage you to set this initially to center-weighted metering. I believe that cameras do make a mistake when they come out of the box set to an evaluative, or what Nikon calls a matrix metering mode. Next, we're going to take a look at the way the camera processes the image. Please note this is particularly important when we shoot a JPEG. So let's dive into it. What we're paying attention to here is how the camera processes the image for a couple things. Specifically, the clarity of the image, which is the contrast right at the edges of subjects, the saturation of the color uh, itself, or its vividness, you might say, and then the overall contrast of the image. The camera comes out of the box in what's called standard, which boosts these three things a little bit, but notice that you have several options. Let's go through them. You're going to have neutral, which is going to be the image without any change. You're going to have vivid, which is boosting the saturation quite a bit. You're going to have a monochrome option, so black and white, and then three specific situations, portrait, landscape, and then we're gonna have a flat or more neutral tone. Portrait is gonna to try to maintain skin tones. Landscape is going to have more saturation. Now I want you to notice here that if I change the camera to raw, the thing that I would always do is take my profile and I would make it neutral. The reason I would do that is that if you shoot raw, you have a lot more latitude when editing your image. And so you can control contrast and saturation and clarity with more finite uh, detail than you can with these basic controls inside of the camera. So I shoot all of my images in RAW and have my picture control set to neutral. I can then control the result afterwards. But if I'm shooting a JPEG, I would want to be in standard or vivid or perhaps the portrait or landscape mode. And that would be because I have less editing control after the fact. So the way that you shoot your image or the file type should dictate your picture control. The next is gonna be flash compensation and we're not dealing with flash in this video. So we're gonna to move to exposure compensation. Exposure compensation is going to be when we are brightening or darkening the overall picture itself. So the way the camera tries to aim for the brightness of the picture. It's going to use things like aperture, shutter, and ISO in order to control this brightness. We're not dealing with those directly yet. So this is a simple way of taking an indirect control over your camera's exposure. Positive values are going to brighten the image as the example on the screen shows and negative is going to darken the image. So we're going brighter and brighter and we're getting the picture that's, uh, that's brighter on the example, and of course the negative numbers are really darkening it. This can be because you want your image to actually be a darker or brighter for aesthetic purposes, or perhaps it's because your camera in this particular scene is measuring the light incorrectly, and this would be a fast way of controlling it. When shooting in program, aperture priority, or shutter priority mode, exposure compensation is going to be a very useful tool. Eventually, we're gonna to try to move you into shooting manually, and we no longer deal with exposure compensation at that point. 
This has been uh, an introduction to the essential components of how to set up your particular D3500 in your quick menu, which is all the important things. And I'll tell you the way that I would have this set up right out of the gate. If you are not comfortable with photo editing yet, JPEG, fine, large. White balance, default to auto, but do select sunny day, cloudy day, or shade if you're in those environments. I would leave the ADL on. ISO, you would probably want to put that at something like 200 or 400 with ISO A or auto, and you can see that at the top of the screen being on, and then it can help you out. AFS for most situations where you are shooting unmoving subjects, but if you're shooting moving subject like kids uh, or activities, AFC. I would be using for my landscape scenes, uh, for my portrait scenes, for, for most things, a single autofocus point selection and get comfortable with that control. Metering and center weighted. If you are in JPEG, being in standard or landscape or portrait, uh, uh, for your picture control, and exposure compensation defaulted at zero, but change it if the camera is producing images that are not to your liking for one reason or another. In a later video, we're going to dive into the menu itself, and I hope that you also take a look at the videos that we're going to have, just teaching you why and when we make different choices than these, but this should get you set up and shooting pictures effectively from day one. So, I hope that that was useful for you. As I said earlier, in later videos, I'm gonna be delving into the full menu system of the camera. I'm going to be treating things like SnapBridge and Flash as their own videos, and I wanna do something on the menu itself, so keep an eye out for that. Of course, on this channel, I've got a lot of things talking about lenses and lighting and other photographic topics, so hopefully you'll check that out. Hopefully you'll be uh, inspired to like and to subscribe. It's free, I hope that you do it. Enjoy your camera, and I'll be seeing you next time.